Hello and welcome once again to my channel Rich's Home Mechanics and you're very very welcome and thank you for visiting me. Um, today we're going to be carrying on uh, working on this little Piaggio uh, 125 Liberty scooter. Um, the issue is it's failed its MOT on the headstock. The headstock up here is very very grouchy so what we're going to do we're going to slowly by slowly take it apart, um, take the wheel off, take the speedo cable off, take the brake caliper off and try and gain access to the headstock there, uh, undo that and knock the forks out. Let's see how we get on shall we? Right first things we're going to do then, I think we should get this brake caliper off. Right having a look at it, there are a Allen key, fortunately I've got an Allen key socket. Now you want a nice tight fit in these. Now, you want that not loose, you want that tight. And if it don't go fully in, just get the old rubber mallet. Give it a gentle tap. You can hear it when it hits home. The noise, that's in there nice and tight. Don't need a massive great ratchet on this. My half inch ratchet is perfect for this size. And we're going to crack it off. Here we go. Beautiful. Don't forget, don't undo it all the way. Loosen the other one as well you want to undo them equally so you reduce the chance of cracking anything or breaking anything because these are under stress um, I use that rule on a lot of things I undo um, obviously when you're doing head gaskets and that it's critical that you have a, a tightening up and an undoing sequence but even on jobs like these I tend to just loosen one up and then loosen the other and then you know you've got no chance of cracking it you, you know you, you're being careful and that's what I do so what we're going to do we're going to loosen these off Beforehand, um, I can see how this goes, but if I was new to doing this sort of work, like a new DIY mechanic, um, I would probably take a photograph, so you can just bring it up and then know where all the bolts are and everything, so it just makes it a lot easier. So let's put them out of the way. What we're going to get next is we're going to give it a little tap. That just shocks it. That shocks that and should release the caliper. And we get the faithful old pry bar here, and we're going to go... Here we go, and she's away. What we're gonna do, we're gonna tuck that out the way, just in there, out of harm's way. Right, what I will do while I'm here, I might as well put these bolts back in. Normally I would put the nuts and bolts in a separate container and mark them up and put caliper, front brake caliper uh, securing bolts onto the disc. But as I've got a thread there, I'm gonna put them in there so we ain't gonna lose them, there's no chance of losing them. Next thing, I think we're gonna drop this wheel out. Now this wheel looks like it's been in here a long time. In fact, I don't think these forks have ever been out um, since the bike was made by the looks of it. And it's a 2006 at present. So, a bit of the old faithful duck oil. Give it a little penetration. Don't have to go crazy. Again, we want the right fitting socket on this. Making sure. Um, I think we'll go for a slightly bigger ratchet. Just to make sure. Hold the wheel against you and pull towards you. Here we go. <coughs> Perfect. Now sometimes, if the nut's a little bit tight, I'll work it back in, and un I undo it, and then I do it up. And by doing that, you're saving that thread. Here we go. It's coming off nice now. Now, what I've got here at the moment, I've still, as you, can, you can't see the other side, but I've still got the um, speedo cable connected, but it's tucked up really tight under the uh, bottom of the fork here. So what we're gonna do is once I've dropped the wheel round down onto the floor, um, we'll undo it then. You'll see what I mean, it's a lot easier. Right, that's there. Now what we need to do, we need to tap that spindle out. Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they don't. This is not going to come out easy, so we're going to have to get a drift on this. Just get bear with me. Now you notice I'm using a rubber mallet on the end here. Sometimes you can leave the nut on, it protects it, but whatever you do, you do not want to bend or damage the end of this thread. Hence, by using the rubber mallet, rubber is softer than metal, it's a no-brainer. This will get damaged before the thread. So here we go, we're going to tap it level. What we're going to also do is, that is, a socket the other side, one of these again, one of the Allen keys. It might 
possibly be that I can help it come out by undoing it this side. So let's have a look. Let's go wheeling to me. That's it. Now I have just noticed on here, let me have a look. I'm not sure if you can see this here. Let me get my torch out. Right, it looks like we have got a unusual, I've not seen this before, maybe it's a scooter thing. Um, normally you can just knock the spindle out, but we've got two Allen keys sitting down the back here, um, which I need to nip off to release it. It's actually nipping the spindle, so I just need to nip them off before we go any further. Let's have a look. Let's get the other Allen keys. I've got two sorts of Allen keys. I've got ratchet ones and these ones. And it all depends on what sort of area and what gap and how much leverage I used to need to get into. But yeah, this is again, live video, didn't see it. Tried to tap it out and then further inspection. Like you say, if it doesn't go, if it doesn't come out straight away, there's a reason. But sometimes they're tight, but if it doesn't come out, look around and I've eyeballed it and there's two little bolts the other side of the fork. You can't quite see it there. Um, but I'm gonna release them and then I should be able to release this spindle. Again, it's a little bit rusty over time, there's a little bit dirt in there. I'm going to give it a little tap, just to make sure, and hold the wheel into my chest. That's one. Now I'll tell you what. These are tight, very tight. Um, there's corrosion in there. I managed to get that one out, so we might be a little bit fiddly getting this other side out. Just bear with me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen this one, and hopefully, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a little, little tap with the mallet, just to shock it. Now this one, I think might be a little bit of a doodah. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn that round. It's tight. Right, just bear with me. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to get another socket. Right, I just wanted to show you we were cracking on so well, but hey ho, welcome to the real world of the home mechanic and the normal mechanic you come up against these things all the time now we've undone the main bolt there and we wanted to drop the spindle out and tap it through from the other side and withdraw it um, fortunately this has got two little um, like nip uh, allen key bolts which are holding it in now I need to release them which will release that gap there and then we can get a, a bar on there a uh, allen key ratchet and tap it with a process of tapping and unwinding get this spindle out and drop this wheel out so we can gain access to these forks no 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 this one comes out here we go this one actually spins out lovely this one is rusted solid right so here we go so the scenario we've got the old allen key on it it's not having it so it's just span out that's rusted solid had to scratch my head a bit on this i'm going to have to think about this because there's certain things you have to think about seriously or you can cause more damage and cause a headache and just make the job god knows 10 times longer the options i can see i've got a reciprocating saw on my air saw i can either get the reciprocating saw and cut up like that underneath and go straight through and cut the actual um bolt in half so it releases that enough for me to get the spindle out um and then worry about this later get it on the bench and then drill it out properly or I can get a drill and um, drill the head off and just drill the bolt completely out. It's probably going to ruin the thread in there, but we can re-tap that. Or another option I've got, which I've been thinking about, which I have used many times and it is quite successful, is to um, tap that bolt in there, as you can see, get me MIG welder out and weld that and um, crack it off like that. 
This I'm maybe shying away from because this is aluminium. I'm going to probably struggle to get a good earth on this bike. It means disconnecting the battery and all that lot. And I'm very, very worried that this is Ali. And if when you've got a MIG there, it's going to, it possibly going to damage this. And um, I don't want to buy another set of forks. There's not the budget in the bike to allow that uh, in this situation. So I think we're going to do away with that. And I think, personally, I think we're going to have to go the old school way and drill it out. So let's get the drills out. Right, we've got the old drill out, and we're going to go resort to the old-fashioned drilling out. Now, what I've done here, this is, we're going to start off with this size, and what I've done, I've put the tape, and this is one of the original bolts on the other side. So, the idea being that I don't drill too deep, and that should do it. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start with that size, and we're going to start the, build up the drill sizes, one, two, three, and the idea of it is, this will take the head off and then we're going to drill straight through and take the bolt out hopefully that will then let us release this spindle so what i'm going to do in this video this part i'm going to start drilling um, if you wanted to see how i've done this before in the past um, search my previous videos on richard home mechanics and you'll see i've done it but this is quite labor intensified and it can take a little while and you've got to take your time and get it right so let's just show the first start of the cutout or the drill out and then I'll pause the video and we'll come back once I've actually drilled it out. But it's exactly the same stage. All I'm going to do is up the drill. The idea is to get the head of the Allen key off. Once I've got that off, I will then literally put the same size drill slightly bigger than the bolt that's left in there. And we'll drill the bolt out. And hopefully we'll be left with a hole inside like that. Minus, basically there's no bolt in there. And we can tap the spindle out. So let's have a look. Let's drill this mother out. Nice and steady. A little bit of oil on that. Normal oil is fine. I'm not going to use my duck oil. I just need normal oil. And what I'm going to probably do, because that's probably quite a hard and steel um, Allen key in there. Um, I'm going to probably have to pause later and resharpen some of these drills. But hey ho, let's start the process. Let's get this Allen key bolt out and crack on. Nice and slow, you don't want it fast. That's going nicely. Right, so there we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crack on for that and we'll come back once I've got this uh, bolt studied out this Allen key out and then we can crack on. Okay, we're back again. Right, what I've managed to do, I've managed to drill that bolt out. As you can see, let's have a look. Let's have one of these bolts. I've drilled the head off and I've drilled underneath and I've used a measuring stick. So basically, I've made sure I've gone deep enough to go underneath the spindle there to release this. Now remember, before we drilled this out, this centre spindle wasn't having none of it. I whacked it with a rubber mallet. It weren't having it. So what I've done, I've drilled it out. And if anyone wants to... Um, me to do a video on how I've done that at a later date, please uh, leave a message there. Um, particularly on this job, I wanted to crack on. Now, I spent about 20 minutes drilling this out. Um, inside there, that was a hard and steel um, Allen key bolt, and I had to uh, resharpen my drill bits. I do them myself. I sharpen my, my own drills with a machine I've got. Again, I can do a video on that. It saves you a fortune uh, just to resharpen your metal drills. So hopefully we've done it. So let's do a depth check. We need to make sure this is the same depth as the bolt. Here we go. Here's the original bolt. Let's have a look. Let's find that down here somewhere. Not the drill. Here we go. Here we go. Got it. It's hiding up amongst my Allen keys. Somewhere. Here we go. Now, so you see that? I'll put it back in again. And that is the depth we've done. So we have gone the full depth of that bolt. So basically, it's the equivalent of what we've done is drilled it out. We've drilled the whole bolt out. That doesn't exist in there anymore. So hopefully, with a bit of persuasion, not too much, I hope, we should better get this spindle out. And once we've got the spindle out, if it comes out all right, I'll then um, move on to the headstock. We'll remove the camera, and then we'll crack on, try and get these forks dropped out. And I think once we've got the forks dropped out, we'll call it a day on there, because it's taken me a little while to do this. So let's crack on. Look at that. Now, this is live. I haven't made it up. That was stuck solid. Um, it didn't want to know. Need to make room for this wheel to come out now. 
let's have a look that's going to come out so i'm going to support the wheel here we go i don't think i'm even going to need a drift but i must remember i've got the speedo cable there so when i drop it down i must release that speedo cable there you go look look how easy that is now you can see here this is what these little Allen key grub screws, grub bolts uh, were doing. They were nipping onto that spindle as extra security. So you obviously got the nut the other side holding it in. And this is just another security to stop this coming loose. But look, that's coming out lovely now. That was well worth spending the 20 minutes to drill that out. I think I make the right decision on that. I think if I welded it and put a bolt on there, we could seriously have damaged these forks. But I'm um, hey ho, happy days. I'm well chuffed with that. So here we go. I want to make sure, um, keeping an eye on where the spacers go. So I just want to drop this wheel. Let's drop it down. Here we go. That's the speedo drive. Here we go. Happy days. Oh, that's even better. We can tuck that out of the way. There we go. So, took longer than anticipated, but that is the real world of home mechanics. We had an issue there, and uh, we obviously dealt with it. So what we're going to do now is... Um, we're going to remove the camera and we're going to go up to the headstock. Okay, we finally got there with the little bit of uh, an issue getting that um, wheel spindle out. We overrode that and that's what we do on Richard's Home Mechanics. We get round things like that and that's why we're all still learning. Um, right, we need to get these, drop these forks out to replace these uh, headstock bearings. Now, sometimes these are uh, held in secured with a nut sometimes they're held in with like a ring that you tap round with a cold chisel and a club hammer in this particular circumstances these are held in with a tap out ring so i'm going to need a club hanger but first of all i need to give it a little sprinkle of lubricating liquid now i use wd-40 now to over the last two days, I've come out there in the evening when I've got back from work and I've just given it a little spray just to make sure it's really, really penetrated. That's very important because these can rust up quite seriously. So hopefully, me taking the time and the effort to do that will make it a lot easier to get these forks dropped out. So what we need to do first then is knock this locating ring off and it looks like we've got two and then we'll see if we can actually drop these forks out. So first of all, decent cold chisel doesn't need to be too sharp you do not want a sharp one because you don't want to damage these you can get special spanners for these but these will suffice now you just need a little tap they've got little rigids and you just give it a little tap here we go that's all it needs just to release it right i'm not sure how many there is on here there's definitely one there's one locking ring and what i'm going to do i'm going to lay these out as they come off right here we go there's another one here, another locating ring. Here we go. Just a little shock, nothing too hard. It comes on. Now that's lovely. Now that is ready to drop. There's only a few threads on there. So what we're going to do, we're going to move this camera down, ready in anticipation to drop these forks out. Here we go. Right, I'm up the top. Let's release this nut, because these forks are either going to come out, oh look at that, straight out. Right, I'm going to just secure that while I just put this locking wheel nut down. Here we go. So we're going to ease these forks out, being very, very careful, because quite often you've got little bits that are going to come out with it. Here we go. And here we go. As you can see there, I've still got a cable connected, I've got to uh, just undo. But basically, that is the forks out. Now, what we'll do, we're going to call it a day on that, um, because we've spent quite a bit of time um, with that nut drilling it out. So, what we'll do, that's going to be the video for now. Um, this is going to be part two. Follow me up for part three, while we um, replace the headstock bearings and put these forks back in, and hopefully do it all up. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like it or tell your friends um, put that notifier black notifier We'll see you soon on the next episode of Richard's home mechanics. Thank you for watching